Okay. Uh, my name is Konrad Jędrzejczyk. Uh, I used to work in police uh, forensics, but then I came to my senses and I went uh, to global banking, involving myself in uh, security and, and investigations. I have some more uh, experience than uh, displayed here, like uh, passing the ISSP exam. But, is, but what is uh, really important is that I was always interested in tapping to all digital transmissions uh, that I were able since my first Commodore 64. Oh, work. Okay. And uh, I, as uh, mentioned, uh, we will be talking about practical approaches. Um, I see more people are coming. Uh, what we are seeing here is a, a WPA handshake. This is all very interesting, but what is important is that um, SSID, the broadcasted na uh, name of the network, is taking part in the encryption. What that means is that uh, you cannot effectively use rainbow tables in cracking uh, GSM, uh, Wi-Fi. This is not like uh, GSM uh, rainbow tables, two terabytes uh, for Kraken, for cracking G GSM. Um, if you have two networks and, uh, with different network names and the same password, the output, the hash, will be different. So you cannot use, uh, reuse the pre-calculations. There are some um, rainbow tables uh, for given na uh, network names like Linksys or D-Link for given uh, key space, but um, they are not used because uh, it's uh, limited ef uh, effectiveness, marginal, I would say. Uh, here we see a logic about uh, around uh, authentication. Uh, what is important here that, uh, is that uh, for, crack, for cracking uh, WPA, we need to have a handshake. And to, uh, we can, of course, wait for a client to reconnect to our network, but we also can force it to de-authenticate. And by de-authentication, we mean sending forged information to access point that client wishes to cease the connection access point accepted, and the connection is ended. Then the driver of a client tries to reconnect. The handshake takes place, and we have it. Uh, this is a basic package. I have a lot of this equipment, but I've decided to show you this. Uh, the old one PCMC card uh, is a proxim uh, or in a Kogold version. At the time, it was worth a few hundred dollars. Now it's worthless. A few years ago, I wanted to uh, put it in good use, uh, but the card was not able to catch uh, the handshake. It came out that uh, it was uh, conducted on N. Uh, this is beyond its hardware capabilities, so your hardware, hardware must be up to date. Um, the example of equipment of, uh, that is up to date is Alpha card on the right, the black one. Uh, but it does have its weaknesses like problems in long captures, noise handling, and power consumption. Uh, right top, we have uh, TP-Link. Uh, this is a very cheap router. It's very good for OpenWRT, uh, but we will take, uh, talk uh, it uh, in a minute. Uh, on the left, we have uh, almost the same in func functionality, but with battery on board. I some some uh, can say that it is very useful, but I've never took advantage of it. Uh, we have also 3G modem. Uh, this uh, have a micro SD card. This is very important, as uh, we will talk uh, about it later. And the flash drive. This might seem uh, silly at first, but uh, I've spent much time looking for a high capacity flash drive that will be fast enough to serve as a swap file and at the same time uh, be uh, in USB 2.0 standard. None of the tested by me routers were able to boot from a uh, flash drive USB 3.0, so forget about backward compatibility. This doesn't exist, really. And uh, here we have um, uh, OpenWRT running on a simple router. This is um, very basic but very useful uh, operating system. It's safe for normal home use, and we can install it 
uh, install on it almost everything. Uh, here we have a window with uh, connected uh, router on uh, WRT running ng. Here we are um, gathering all informations from all channels. We can, of course, set it uh, with uh, particular settings like um, only capture uh, given network name or channel or uh, client. As we can see here, uh, we have only WPA2. Uh, this is a random building, so we can completely forget about WIP. Uh, we see two networks here and here that are uh, exchanging data. Uh, these two networks can be uh, our targets for fast uh, deauthentication, so we can uh, fast have our, ha uh, uh, our handshake uh, for decryption purposes. Uh, after you spend some years in Wi-Fi, you wish to have uh, some more information about uh, the environment, the network, the clients, how they connect. Uh, we can use free tools. I know that uh, in a uh, presentation that will come today, they will show you some little graphs, but this is as useful as, as uh, uh, other solutions. Uh, and it's free, um, uh, except uh, the connections that are currently taking place. We can see also the beacons. So uh, we can also see the clients uh, that wish to um, uh, call for a network that is remembered. This, is, this uh, can be a drawback. Why? Because your device is remembering networks that uh, it uh, connected in the past. So without uh, any forensic investigation, it can be proved that your device was connecting to a neighbor's network. Uh, you can also ask uh, your fiance after uh, going um, back from conference why her hardware is or his hardware is trying to connect a new hotel. Uh, now some math. Uh, please bear with me. This is important as it will be evident. Uh, password entropy. Brute forcing a password. Why if we even considering it? In Poland, uh, one of the major uh, Wi-Fi um, internet, broadband internet provider, is uh, uh, giving you a router, as uh, most of these, with a unique network name. This is very good, not only uh, to identify your network, but also, as we learned, for the security purposes. We, we cannot reuse the calculation that we are, have already made uh, for other networks. but they use the passwords in very wrong way. They use only uh, mm, this this uh, upper uppercase uh, only eight uh, character passphrase. So this is absolute minimum accepted uh, by WPA. Uh, lower you can have on the numbers, eight numbers and and, and ready. And uh, this uh, this entropy is exactly this. This is uh, the number of uh, possible combinations that uh, may uh, be on such router. And in this example, we have very outdated Radeon 6850. This is uh, not produced anymore. This is worth $40, and uh, it is unable to handle new Mortal Kombat. But it does um, uh, generate 49 kilo hashes per second. Uh, this is this is much more than uh, more modern CPU. We don't use uh, CPUs for cracking. Uh, as you can see, you have 3.3 kilo hashes per second versus 49 kilo hashes on outdated $40 uh, Radeon. Uh, about about the process of cracking, uh, since uh, this is one way encryption, this is hash. So we are trying all possible combinations to match the output hash, and uh, when we will find it, it will uh, point out the proper input. So, 
at this point, I'm sure that everybody is uh, thinking what old Bitcoin min miner can give us. Well, it's in uh, our example with UPC, we will have all possible combinations in two days. 99% chance that you will have password to any UPC uh, access point in two days. But wait, this is only an, an entropy. So um, statistics su suggest that you should uh, find it in the middle. So in the, um, when you have a little farm, you have your password in one day. And in uh, this example of outdated equipment, we have 26 days. Okay. Believe me that this was not uh, prepared for this presentation. This is not a fake. This is, this is our uh, password entropy in the wheel, really. Uh, this is a live example. Uh, we have UPC access point. We have this uh, outdated Radeon, as we uh, spoke uh, before, 49 kilohashes per second. Uh, we have timing here, and the password was uh, found not in 52 days, not in 26 days, below nine hours. Password starting with AA. You have to understand that I'm not uh, targeting um, UPC particularly. This is an example of um, broadband, broadband uh, provider that uses uh, security in a uh, very wrong way. We'll also uh, speak about this later. What, uh, watch what will, will happen if we will add just one, one sign to our uh, passphrase. We will not have eight, but nine. Uh, still, we have uh, 26 uh, possible characters in the past phase. This is almost two years for a single modern uh, GPU. And for uh, our little farm, for nine uh, characters in the past phase, we have 52 days, exactly the same amount, uh, exactly the same time as uh, eight uh, character password for outdated radio. When we are approaching a uh, non-standard access point, uh, access point that uh, have name uh, like Kate Network, Home, something like this, we need to uh, approach it differently. We know that um, uh, there is a high possibility that the user uh, actually made his own password. And we cannot approach uh, most of these uh, access points with uh, our equipment because uh, a passphrase uh, of 10, 10 characters uh, most likely will be beyond our uh, hardware capabilities. So uh, this is Paulina. This is uh, an example of Polish woman's name. Uh, this, uh, this is in uh, the very basic Polish word list. And well, people are uh, People know more than we are led to believe. They don't put so simple passwords in the, you know, on their access points. They make, uh, for example, uh, first character a capital letter because they were forced to do so in other web applications and they reuse their password or they uh, add um, a number or a number and a special. All of these, this here, we can generate using such rules. Uh, we, we can see here um, uh, string uh, normally uh, occurring in the word list and signs put it before, after, special, uh, changing the uh, case. And well, here we have a sample from Polish stolen database that is public, publicly available for quite some time. I've underlined um, strings that are present in the very basic Polish or an English word list. As you can see here, using such a rules, we can defeat all, most of these passwords. So this is just an exploitation of uh, 
the weaker point in our security implementation, which is human. How we can generate this, uh, this passwords, this, these rules? We can use uh, ready tools like CAP, but we can easily, very easily, write our own software. And, uh, well, uh, try to remember that you can't save all this output uh, from uh, th these tools to hard disk drive because, well, uh, the output would be much bigger than any drive uh, currently available. So the best way would be to fit the output from sh such tool directly to, for example, Hashcat, which is, uh, in my opinion, the best uh, cracking tool for WPA. As we said, uh, this won't be as easy as we can see here, but uh, we will be not able to directly approach our victim and ask for a uh, password, but with very little effort, we will be able to uh, figure out how the password is generated. Well, f uh, at this point, I'm sure that all of you uh, know how to generate your own passphrases. And WPS, when poor design meets poor implementation. Because of its design flaw, uh, we have only 11,000 possible combinations. Uh, WPS, perhaps uh, from the beginning. Uh, WPS is a um, system uh, that, was fi uh, that was designed in order to help the users uh, which are well, uh, which have a little problems in handling the passwords. So someone figured out that perhaps we, when we will uh, make a pin as a backup, uh, the uh, user will have an um, easier life. Uh, when we uh, normally, theoretically, when we push a button, uh, we uh, enter a pin correctly in the on our laptop. The access point will send in plain text its passphrase. So what we need is only a correct uh, pin. This pin will always be within this 11,000 uh, possible combinations. Uh, UPC, UPC again. Um, they ac their access points, their routers uh, were uh, ready for uh, checking all the possible combinations from uh, the moment they were started. So uh, access point uh, just waited uh, for uh, the right pin and you could just uh, play the river, wait, wait up to four hours and you had 1% assurance that you will get a password no matter how long or difficult it was. Um, this was uh, fixed uh, with an update around uh, January 2015, and the standard is uh, for uh, quite a few years with us. Um, uh, with other um, equipment like TP-Link or D-Link, uh, D -Link, we had problems that uh, of this kind that we didn't need to push, push a button. Uh, to, to make the access point ready f for receiving um, a pin. It was not protected uh, against brute forcing, and uh, some, of, uh, some of them had so much problems that even if you will disable the WPS from the web panel, it was, all, uh, it, uh, it was still uh, available, it was still on. This was just, okay, it's, it's not available, but it still works. Mm. So what we, we what we need to do is to patch, 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 and disable it. This is this is the best way. Um, back to OpenWRT. This is a sample of the hardware compatibility table. I can tell you that this table is so long that your router is also compatible with it, and uh, I employ you to to test it. Uh, here we have a um, uh, router running on OpenWRT. You have uh, the machine. You have some uh, other uh, information about uh, CPU and, and so on. And what we are seeing here is a, a flash drive capacity. Uh, we can also add here a swap 
if uh, the memory is not uh, enough for all our in, um, application, but usually when you're just um, sniffing our all network, uh, there is no need for that. And of course, uh, this flash drive must be fast enough to handle a swap file. In other cases, uh, this, usually f this usually freezes. And we have all, all tools that you would normally use on your laptop, on your Kali Linux, on, on uh, other such a distribution. We c we you can all of it install on your um, uh, OpenWRT router and use it with with uh, with, for, uh, with, ba with battery with um, 3G modem modem that does have its um, micro SD slot uh, serving as a uh, high capacity uh, drive you can uh, execute wormhole attack you can be far away from the actual range of uh, Wi-Fi of the targeted network you can still work on it you can uh, sniff the traffic, you can uh, run a river uh, looking for VPS, you can do almost everything. And if you are starting to use a uh, terminal, don't forget uh, about the screen. You either know it already or you will learn that this is the most important. Uh, okay, uh, this is, as uh, previously said, uh, all what we need uh, to execute man in the middle attack. Uh, we can also make a proxy uh, for a uh, person, for a network owner that we don't specially like. Um, when we are in network over the wormhole uh, attack, uh, using it remotely or uh, any other access, we can uh, execute more sophisticated uh, attack from, from a social engineering toolkit, but uh, today we won't have time for this. And when we are on the victim network, we sometimes want to access the administrator panel. We can do this. This, this is the uh, easiest way to, to use uh, Hydra. Uh, Hydra is uh, uh, software for Poland. This is a uh, normal uh, pack for uh, Kali Linux. Uh, we can use uh, combo lists, as previously uh, displayed. Uh, but in case of uh, administrator panel, uh, the, u uh, the usual length of needed uh, passphrases is very short because people tend to not change the passwords uh, to the panel that they are afraid to use. So don't worry about this. And yes, if we have problems with uh, uh, the passphrase for uh, administrator panel, they are, they, there are routers uh, in the world that actually allow you to execute commands on the root um, account without inputting any password. Look for it. You know, there is a bunch of examples. And uh, you can also, uh, in some cases, download the, uh, the flash from the router. So you can uh, download it, unpack it, and look for hash or uh, um, password in the plain text, depending on the software vendor. Uh, this vulnerability was used uh, one year ago uh, in Poland. We had uh, a lot of malware that changes the DNS in home routers. And uh, what it did, actually, uh, just uh, changing uh, DNS. You uh, play with your internet without any problems. Uh, you are uh, sending on your, all your requests to a copy of simple DNS. However, when you are w when you want to uh, connect to online banking, it is, this is redirecting you to a fake site, and uh, you have uh, money in the middle again. Uh, if you are uh, thinking about testing uh, such um, uh, attack. Uh, we need to do something with this, this certificate. Well, uh, in practice, sometimes there is no human approving uh, the particular certificate, and this is done automatically. And even if there is, you can always change the content after you get it. We only need, we only need here to be green. 
the domain is not so important. Uh, well, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is now everywhere. We can look for vulnerabilities everywhere. Uh, one year ago, also one year ago, it was very popular to um, exploit the vulnerability in the intelligent lightning. Again, you can gain access to a victim network or a, a, a TV or, or something. This is look for it. This is very interesting. But no, uh, not always the uh, wrong implementation is an issue. Uh, sometimes we can use uh, new standards, new options. Here we have example of quite element for H standard. Uh, this is a uh, new addition. Um, to cut the uh, story short, it was meant to uh, add a possibility for a router to ask for silence when advertising its network name. So, of course, we, uh, we can use it to just silence uh, our victim uh, routers and force the user to make a factory reset just in case his password was too strong for, for us. Uh, we can uh, also constantly deauthenticate this client, but well, uh, this is very noisy. Everybody see it. Uh, it it uh, it is locked in uh, such a router and quite element. To my knowledge, is not. Uh, you can see only in raw. raw. Uh, there is, there are no automatic tools looking for it, even uh, IPS or, or something like this. So, uh, any questions? Hello. Hello. Regarding the hash cracking, yes, is, would it be possible to use USB Bitcoin miners to crack the hash? And what do you do when you don't have any traffic on the network besides the authentication attacks? Okay. Uh, the first question: um, When you are uh, this uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin uh, miners on USB, they are pre-programmed. Uh, they are made in factory to solve only uh, uh, for Bitcoin purposes. Uh, we cannot reprogram it. This is not Spartan-like uh, chips. You can use Spartans, but they are very expensive. This is like programmable uh, Bitcoin miner. And uh, when there is no traffic, uh, and we are, when we are dealing with, with uh, WPA, this might be a little problem. However, we can check uh, WPS. This is first. And uh, well, we can sniff uh, the particular network, particular uh, network and channel. You, uh, so you have no problems in Irodump and listen to it for a few weeks and you have 100% chance that someone will connect if the uh, access point is active. I hope this answer. Any other questions? No? Really? Everything was clear. Thank you so much. Thank you.